Hey everybody, this is Will. Today we're gonna to continue our deep dive and our look at Oracle for X Series. Oracle for X Series is the free control software from iConnectivity that allows you to connect and control all of your iConnectivity interfaces. Now, if you haven't downloaded Oracle for X Series yet, it's a free download and click the link in the description of this video to download that and you can follow along. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna be taking a look at the audio page in Oracle for X Series. And it's worth noting, the audio page is gonna function differently. It's gonna look a little differently based on what interface you have connected. So in today's video, we're going to focus just on the Play Audio 12. So let's dive into that. And in our next video, we're going to take a look at the Audio 4C as well as some of the other audio interfaces from iConnectivity. So to start with, uh, you see I've got multiple audio interfaces connected here. I'm going to click this button to go into the audio page on the Play Audio 12. And the first thing I want to point out to you is uh, even though the Play Audio 12 can do some really advanced things and it's a very powerful interface, uh, the, the interface for uh, Oracle for X series here is just really simple and it's it's really easy to dive in so there's no need to be intimidated by a very powerful interface but has very simple control first thing i want to start with is these two options up here in the right hand corner of our screen uh, we can choose to uh, decide how our headphone output of our play audio 12 functions so uh, on headphones we can use these uh, faders down here and these options down here to create a headphone mix or a monitor mix uh, from our 10 outputs from our DAW. We can choose uh, to adjust the volume here. We could type in an exact value, adjust our pan, type in an exact value for our pan. We can mute solo or choose to manage these as stereo pairs as opposed to individual uh, discrete mono outputs. Then to the right, we can adjust the volume level of our headphone output as well too. Uh, we could type that in and mute. So this is super helpful in a scenario where you're maybe in a playback scenario, playing back tracks from your DAW, uh, but you don't have a in-ear mix. You don't have a monitor mix. And so you could use the headphone output of your Play Audio 12 uh, to create a monitor mix really quickly, choosing from the 10 outputs coming from your DAW. But let's say you want to use the headphone output instead of using it for headphones to use it to uh, have two additional outputs. So if we click outputs up here, now we can use our headphone output uh, to be outputs 11 and 12. And what that means is um, we can uh, route audio from our DAW uh, to output 11 and 12, and that's gonna come out of the headphone output of our interface. And so this is super helpful. Now in both of these uh, views, both of these different modes, we can adjust the output level of our outputs on the back of the interface. Again, similar to our headphone mix, we can move the fader here, type in an exact value or hit mute. And so both of of these modes are super helpful and beneficial. Now let's jump to the bottom of our screen here. Uh, we can adjust the sample rate, the bit depth, and choose the clock source for our interface. Uh, I would suggest uh, leaving this just the way it's set, uh, unless you have a specific need to change it. And particularly with clock source, leave this set to internal unless you know what you're doing and need to choose between USB device port one or two. Now at the heart of the Play Audio 12, it's all about redundancy. It's all about failover. So in case something happens to your main computer, uh, you can switch to your backup computer. So for the rest of the video, I want to talk about all the settings uh, kind of related to that uh, that are found in the audio page. So first, let's go up to the upper left hand corner of our screen here. We'll see scene A and scene B buttons. Um, and what this allows us to do is select between scene A and scene B on our interface. This is uh, really going to function. It's, it's basically like a manual switch, a manual failover. So it's going to function the same way as if you press the, uh, the scene button on the front panel of your interface, or you were using a foot switch uh, connected to the control input of the Play Audio 12 to switch between scenes. Uh, you can do this from the software as well too. Now it's worth noting that you can have different setups and configurations on scene A as scene B. So in this scenario, when I switch to scene B, uh, it's set to headphones. And when I switch to scene A, it's set to outputs. It's worth noting if you make any changes to scene A, uh, make sure you hold the, uh, the volume knob on your interface for about two seconds to save then go to scene B and make your changes and hold that volume knob again there to save, uh, to save those settings to your scene. Now, let's go to the middle portion of this, uh, of the screen here. We've talked about manual settings and switching from scene A to scene B for failover. But if we look in the middle part of the screen here, uh, we also have the ability to do a auto failover. And so first you're gonna see if auto failover is enabled or disarmed. Uh, if you want to manually arm this, you could click arm failover, or if it's armed and you wanna disarm it, uh, you could disarm your failover there. Now by default, you're gonna uh, have to send tone to your interface to get auto failover to work. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a separate video. Most people use the free live sign plug 
plug in uh, for my connectivity to make that happen. Now let's continue this theme of failover and let's go to the bottom right hand corner of this screen and we're going to look at failover settings. But before I do that, I want to give you a word of wisdom and or potentially a word of caution. Um, when the Palladio 12 ships from iConnectivity, uh, it comes pre-configured to work in almost every playback scenario. And, and this isn't just wild guesses that the team has made. Uh, this is from uh, spending hours and hours and setting up over thousands of, of playback rigs all across the world. And so the settings you're going to get on your Play Audio 12 are going to work in almost every scenario and they're optimized based on the, the hours and years of experience that the iConnectivity team has uh, in live playback environments. So in general, you plug in your Play Audio 12 and it's going to work for you and it's going to work in your particular setup. But if you want to configure or customize, or you're just someone who likes to tinker, uh, you can do that in the failover settings, but proceed with caution. Uh, you can always back out and do a factory reset if you mess something up. But let's dive into failover settings just so you know what is there. So I'm going to click the failover settings option here. Uh, and at the top, we can choose uh, what we're going to use to do our auto failover. So we can choose audio tone, MIDI stream, either or both. Uh, Based on what we have selected here, if we just leave it to the default of audio tone, uh, we can choose what our audio trigger is going to be, failover signal, audio recognized, or host connected. Um, again, most people leave this set to failover signal. And then you can define what audio channel that signal will be expected on. Again, most people leave this to 13 and use uh, the life sign plugin for my connectivity loaded into their DAW. Uh, and then over here, you can choose the audio timeout functionality. This is helpful if your Play Audio 12 keeps automatically switching to your backup, um, even though audio is continuing and in some scenarios uh, that happens and so you can just increase the audio timeout uh, so that it for sure switches when you drop audio now if you choose uh, midi stream either or both you'll see an additional option show up here for midi trigger so you could use a midi signal to, to to be the thing that triggers this and so you could say um, uh, midi recognized host connected failover signal for that uh, and when you're when you do that you could choose your midi channel or midi timeout and again most people leave this set to audio audio tone. Now, to the right here, we have the ability to um, uh, choose to use auto arm or not. And if we disable that, then um, uh, there's really no reason to spend any time the rest of this page. Uh, but we could enable the ability to do auto arm. So leave that set on by default. Um, but down here, auto switch to scene A. Now proceed with caution for this. Uh, but what this means is if your computer switches to scene B, uh, your Play Audio 12 could uh, automatically switch to scene A as soon as it re-sees signal, that audio tone um, on scene A. Now, I don't suggest that generally because let's imagine the scenario where uh, we've switched to scene B, uh, everything's running great, and then suddenly scene A comes back up. Well, our tracks are probably going to be in a different place of our song than they were when we were on scene B. So in general, leave this disabled, but it's, a, it's an option that's available to you if you need it. Now, finally, down here at the bottom, we have the ability to enable uh, to send MIDI on failover. And this is really helpful to uh, avoid any MIDI, MIDI feedback loops or uh, make sure your sustain pedal doesn't get stuck when you're switching between scenes. But if you're having issues with that, you could disable it completely. By default, it, um, it uh, turns on. Uh, it's on by default. You could choose what type of message, sustain pedal off, all sound off, all notes off. Uh, you could choose what MIDI channels you want that to be sent on. By default, it's sent on all 16 channels. Um, you could choose what MIDI ports from the Play Audio 12 that is sent as well too. So there's a tons of a ton of options available to you um, in the audio page uh, on the Play Audio 12. Again, it's very simple controls. It's very kind of straightforward and easy to work through. But again, as a reminder, by default, the settings are going to work for almost every playback scenario. So you're not going to have to mess with this uh, unless you want to do basic controls like uh, adjusting your output levels or things like that. But if you need that advanced control, it's available there as well too. Now, if you have any questions about anything we discuss in this video, um, maybe uh, questions specific about your setup, um, then reach out to iConnectivity support. And I've included information on how to do that in the description of this video. And they'll be more than happy to help and make this work for your specific setup. Uh, thanks so much for watching, everyone. And make sure to check out the next video if you've got an Audio 4C or another audio interface from iConnectivity. And we're going to do a deep dive into the audio page with those interfaces. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. See you on the next one. Take care. Bye.